Hello and welcome to another day in paradise and welcome to another edition of the unapologetic Negropian in today's video. So guys, today I was going to bring you the second part of the video uh, about ES, but I have more news that has come out from the Gambia of more money being stolen by none other than Shikina Shinedu. Yes, she has struck again. Shikina Shinedu has scammed another couple of their life savings. We're going to go into this, we're going to speak about the details and we're going to give you guys a bit of information of how you can avoid this happening. But first I'm going to ask you to please like, subscribe, share and click the bell notification. This really did anger me. It does anger me that we have people um, who are who seemingly have no conscience at all, who are just taking people's money and not paying any consequences for it. And I wondered, why is this happening? Why is it mostly diasporan women who are getting their hands on the money of other diasporans and then running away with it? My grandmother came over from Jamaica uh, way back in the 50s, I believe, uh, late 50s. You have to remember the environment was very hostile for anybody who wasn't English. So we'll say that, not just white, but anyone who was in English. If he was Irish, the uh, environment society was very, very hostile. As Caribbeans, we knew that going to England the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to have problems. You're going to have problems getting a place to stay. You're going to have problems finding w work. Uh, work in a place that is stable, consistent, where you're going to have um, a, a good work environment. I mean, that those three things there, those three things never existed for Caribbeans. One thing we had that the English didn't have when we were going there was community. We had a very tight sense of community okay so when my grandmother came over whilst all the other english white people were buying houses using mortgages that they had from from the banks my grandmother came over we bought our house cash matter of fact we bought two houses cash so what way were we able to do that? It's not like we, we had money coming out of our ears or something. Well, it, it's simple, okay? We had pyramid schemes. There were pyramid schemes that were set up in the community and everybody would pay into these community, uh, into these schemes, into these pyramid schemes and everybody would get a house one by one by one. But it was the nature of our community how tight-knit it was. That is why we were able to do these pyramid schemes and why uh, a lot of Afro-Caribbeans in the United Kingdom especially were able to get a, a, away with living in such a hostile environment. We didn't have to rent houses from, from these degenerates who were over here who didn't want us to stay there anyway. So we were able to come there, buy a house, and of course, we'd buy the biggest house we could, we'd fill all those rooms with other Afro-Caribbean immigrants, they would go to work, they would be part of a pyramid scheme, and one by one by one, everybody would buy themselves a house. Boy, how things have changed. Pyramid schemes are now a thing of the past, simply because community doesn't exist amongst black people anymore in the United Kingdom. It's every man for themselves now. And there is no prime example of somebody in the black community who cannot, the black British community, I should say, who cannot be trusted than Shikina Shinedu. The information that I'm about to disperse to you uh, is from a lady who has attempted to buy land through Shikina Shinedu. And of course, it's come to a point now where this money, the money that she has spent $14,000 uh, 
is not going to be recoverable. The woman in question does not want to be named, so I'm going to redact her details out of the documents, the, 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 the legal documents that I'm about to show you so you can see for yourself just how wretched this <laughs> Shekinah Shinedu is. This is a letter from Aziz Ben Souda, the attorney for the person who owns the piece of land. And this is a very important email in red I have circled. You will see the most important part of this email and I'll read verbatim. Has the previous owner of the land received full and final payment for the land? The answer to this was yes. This is our understanding from Ms. Shinedu. We were not instructed to handle the financial side of the transaction. Kina Shinedu is nothing more than an alias. Once again, I have told you guys this before. These people are using fake names for a reason, especially the African-Americans, actually, because of reasons I just showed you <laughs> with Rick from Bag. So Sharon Luke is her maiden name. Sharon Pantry is her marriage name. I'm not sure which one, because uh, I'm not sure whether she's actually still married. But if you are planning to do any research into Shekinah Shinedu and you want to know further about her history, please go ahead and you can search those two names. I will conduct my own research into these two names as well and see if I can find anything. So it's Sharon Luke, that is her maiden name, and Sharon Pantry is her marriage name. So what has Shekinah done? She has essentially put herself in a position where she makes herself look like a trustworthy person within the community. She has once again told people that she's a lawyer when she isn't. She's been using this power to sign over papers, documents and so forth. And then she can release cash to herself, of course, um, when she shouldn't be doing that. She is basically the middle party when it comes to these deals. So the money should never go to her. It should never pass through her hands. But because she's been given power of attorney, she's been taking this cash, right? She's been taking this cash. And then somewhere in between the lines of her taking this cash and giving it to the landowners, the cash mysteriously disappears. So many of you must be wondering, how does Shakina Shinedu, a.k.a. Sharon Luke, a.k.a. Sharon Pantry, how does she manage to do this? How has she managed to continuously win over the public's trust? Well, that is simple, okay? So I'm going to put you in this situation, right? I've just told you earlier about how we used to do it in the Afro-Caribbean community in the United Kingdom, okay? Many years ago. And who did I say? It was my grandmother who was given that cash. Not my grandfather, but my grandmother. Okay? Shakina Shinedu, another black woman from the Caribbean. All these other people that we've been speaking about, okay? Cezanne, Takwa, Tonya, Sophia, and Coma. All these people, well, they're all black women. And, well, Let's see if we had the choice of being able to uh, grade people from the lowest, uh, most trustworthy. Let's say we start right at the bottom with the white male uh, and we, we finish at the top. The people at the top would invariably be the black woman. They're the most trustworthy uh, human beings on this planet. So they end up trusting one another almost all the time. This can be a problem because there are people out there who know this and they know how to win over a black woman, right? They know, know how to win over a black woman's trust and they use that against us. You never see white women doing things like pyramids, okay? They, don't, they generally don't do things like that because things like that don't work within the white 
community, especially in the United Kingdom. White women can do it because, <laughs> I'm gonna try and be careful with the way I word this, but white, but no, let's say European women know how, how many snakes there are in their own community, okay? They know this already, so they would never trust another one of themselves. So these are the tactics being used by these women. So I've got a lot of people who are saying, oh, well, why don't you go after the, the, the Mzungus? Why do you keep going after people in our own community? Because the reality is, is we should expect this type of behavior from the Mzungus. We should expect it, but we shouldn't expect it from our own. That type of debauchery needs to be stamped out straight away. I have a copy of a ceased and desist letter that was ret written to me uh, by one of Shikina Shinedu's um, lawyers asking me to pull down my videos. Uh, I'm going to put it up on, on the screen after this anyway. So this is the seek and desist letter that was sent to me by Shikina Shinedu's so-called barrister. He sent it to me from a Hotmail account. I don't know how many barristers you guys know who sends their business emails through a Hotmail account. I don't know any. But anyway, I'm not sure how stupid Shakina thinks I am. So that is the ceased and de-assist de that she has written to me. I've got a copy of it here. Uh, and essentially it tells it's telling me to make sure that I do not do any more videos about Shakina Shinedu or else she will take it uh, take me to court not only is she using this for that reason but she's saying that uh, she has lost a lot of business because of my videos and thus she's trying to tie that to the money she took the 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 twenty five thousand dollars she took from the Canadian Jamaican couple. So she's saying, well, I, I get to keep that now because yeah, it wasn't my fault. It was it, you know you shouldn't be talking about me like that online. That's what she's trying to do. That's what's going to happen to your money, your money, if you go ahead and you give it, right. I'm really sorry that this video is not going out to everybody and there are people out there, there are people out there who are still willingly giving their money to these crooks and criminals. Well, do you want me to let you know what I think about this? There we go. I'm going to have to start taking action myself. Actually, I've already started taking action. I've already sorted myself out. I don't run around telling people about my plans. I sit in the back. I plot my plans. And I wait. And I wait for people to make their first moves. And this is what's happening right now. So people like Shakina Shinedu need to really be aware because I have powers too. Do you know, sometimes in order to take somebody's attention, in order to get somebody to stop doing something, in some cases you can't just tap them on the shoulder to get their attention. Sometimes you need to smash them over the head with a sledgehammer to make sure they have your full attention. And this sledgehammer is being slowly risen. And soon, it's gonna come back down. And it's gonna come back down so hard. Guys, once again, I'll say it again. I cannot stress to you the importance of not sending any money to this woman, okay? Under any circumstances. If you do, you run the risk of losing every single penny of it. I've found two solid cases with evidence of her and the way she works, okay? Some of it I have shown in this very video, but I know of a number of other cases that I haven't brought up yet, 
And the reason I haven't brought up the, these other cases is because I don't have the receipt yet. But as soon as I have those receipts, I am going to put her on blast. I'm looking forward to the legal action. I really am. Because I know of a horde of other people who will be looking for the same thing too. And the problem you're going to have, Shakina, is that we have a, a team of people, a real team, not like your tin pot Exodus Alliance. We have a true team of professionals who have banded together, who will, even if we don't get the money back, we'll make sure that you get yours. So many of you may be asking, what the hell is Shakina Shinedo doing with all this money? Well, allow me to show you. So this is a secret recording of Shikina Shinidu's house that is currently under construction just outside the capital of the Gambia. It is looking rather good actually at this present moment. Still a lot of work to be done in the house, but yeah, all the wiring is starting to get done. And this is exactly where your hard-earned money, where your money that she's investing, this is where she's investing it. Not in any land that you want to buy, but in her own property. Beautiful house being paid for with your money. If you want to add to her fund to build her house, her perfect little piece of paradise under the Gambian sun, then go ahead, work with her. But don't say I didn't warn you. I have at this moment a lot of plans in the work to bring you something that will help solve all of this, okay? I think it's wrong that we live in a world where we need to give our money to people who we, we're not 100% sure we can trust. And then we, we, we sort of, in order to invest in Africa, we need to do this. We need to give our money to these diasporans and then, then we keep our fingers crossed and hope and pray that these people are good people. Not anymore, okay? Things are going to change. Things are in the works to change. I, I don't want us to be in this situation any longer. Our return back to the continent should be a chronicle that should be written about and one that should be filled with joy, one that should be built on trust, trust of the continentals and diasporans as well. But the debauchery being brought by a small group of people, that needs to stop. And I'm going to make sure I do everything in my power. If it doesn't stop, I'll make sure that everybody knows about it and that everybody has a way of avoiding it. So if any of you have any more problems with Shikina Shinedu or with anybody else, please get in contact with me at tontalks at gmail.com. That is tontalks at gmail.com. I will answer you. I have a flood of emails that come in almost every single day. So if I don't get back to you in the same day or even two days, I will get back to you 100% guaranteed. So please bear with me. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing. Thanks for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Until then, please think twice to our bit. <laughs>